Hey guys, how is everyone? I hope you're well. Um, this is the fourth of the uh, four kits that we bought at Black Friday of last year from Farmer Tech. Um, kind of sad that it's uh, under my bench that long. It just I put three of three kits together in a row and just kind of got burned on doing kits and had a lot of other projects and um, honestly I'd kind of forgot about it for a little bit but uh, gonna try to get on it next week and put it together these things are usually pretty quick to assemble once you get the cases together it's just kind of all downhill from there but um, you know then the, the port work and if we have to do any kind of uh, band or base work to it you know that's going to take a little bit of time as well but um we'll just have to see i have not went through any of this um i just opened the box to make sure that you know it did look like a 460 kit in the box but who knows could get into it and it'd be a 440 kit but it is labeled 460 on the box so uh you know we'll see and that's basically just what this is going to be is just an unboxing just a just to show what comes in the kit and mainly to make sure everything or at least it, you know that it looks like everything's here that we need i have got a couple kits that you know we're just missing little odds and ends and we had to order parts and uh you know it kind of got our build put on the back burner but uh hopefully everything's here um Let's see, this is usually your current case assembly. Um, I'm gonna make sure I'm keeping you guys in frame, so if I bump the camera over now and then, uh, that'll be why just to get the screen lit up. And that was in there upside down. Um, and yes, we have uh, some current cases and all of our rubber parts. It's kind of odd the rubber parts are usually laying um, and our cool, uh, what else is in here? That looks to be the chain brake cover and chain brake hardware. Um, usually the crankcase gaskets laying in the bottom of these boxes. And you have to kind of be careful with this stuff. Um, I have done this and lose pieces and find them a week later and that's just like the it goes in between the air filter cover and the uh, shroud for like when you're wanting to pull your little deflector and let hot air come back in on the carb during the winter but um, yep there's our crankcase gasket usually a carb gasket in there as well um, does look like 460 cases. Again, our rubber pieces, um, that thing, chain brake hardware, and our tool. And to be honest, I think I got it all back in there the way they put it. Nine times out of ten, I'll unbox these, and <laughs> I cannot for the life of me get everything to go back in the box the way they had it. But, and I'm going to try to do a full detailed build on this. Um, I've got an 046. I've got a 440. I've got so many work saws here. Um, this one's going together. Just complete toy build. Um, <laughs> there's going to be some stuff I'm going to do and show that, um, you know, some people just ain't going to agree with. But, you know, I've done it and it works. Um, it's just stuff that you can do to free up a little extra horsepower that some people don't show or maybe some people don't know about or you know whatever it is what it is um, this is more than likely a carburetor and i almost got this out and put on that black saw um because the carburetor we got for that was just pure garbage as well as the lines um but you know we told that in the video or some of the videos um this carb will go right on a 290 029 310 um i don't know that there's any real differences the venturi size may be may be different i know the model number is a little different but 
we may do that when we get this out um you know it could be a simple hop up say for a 290 or something who knows but uh i don't know that there's any real difference but like i said we may do that when we get into the build of it because i've got a pile of uh freaking 290 or that series of carburetor because they were all garbage aftermarket but the one that's on that saw it still seems to be starting up and running um handlebar i wouldn't call it flimsy but i wouldn't call it the stiffest bar that i've had a hold of either i have gotten some of them like my first 660 um somehow the handlebar on that got bent but um the material was fragile enough i was able to just grab it and bend it and straighten it right back out we all know what that is chain brake handle or flag whatever you want to call it um little box down here this is usually just random bolts and stuff and lo and behold that's what we've got a big old box full of bolts um other random parts and stuff if you've not done one of these, these things are super fun to put together. Um, I recommend doing it without watching a video just to give yourself a challenge or without having an IPL to go by. Um, if you've built any saws at all, it probably won't be much of a challenge at all. But, uh, well, um, chain brake cover. I've actually got one of these sitting over here in my filing cabinet I bought a while back. Um, I think it's my 024 Super's got an old busted up cover on it, and I just never have got it out and changed it. Um, plastic, you know, Farmer Tech plastic, we all know, has came a long way in the last couple of years. I say that, and then this will probably fit like shit, but um, air filter cover. I think that same cover actually may fit all. I know the air filter and deflector and stuff all from a 440 up to 880 is the same but i'm wanting to say that that cover may actually fit a 660 but i'm probably wrong on that about no one am um dual port muffler looks just like one that would come on a 460 or it's about identical to the one on my 046 mag doesn't look like there's a bath full in it. That's a good thing. It's less work I have to do. Um, let's see. Tank assembly. Um, if I'm remembering out the one on my 440, the switch was kind of goofy on it. Um, this one, this one's fine. The one on my 440, you couldn't even make it move when I got it out of the box. Um, a little bit of penetrating lubricant and working it back and forth that free dried up there. Some of these larger parts will probably sit over here in the floor next to me. Um, starter recoil, is that magnesium? Let's see. Looks magnesium. She's magnesium. That's a good thing. Um, never a bad thing to have a magnesium cover. That's kind of something funny about Husqvarna, even some of their biggest, largest saws have plastic recoil covers, but, you know, it's lighter and they seem to work, but seems like the aftermarket ones you get are just like super freaking flimsy. Um, that's the only one flywheel. At least this saw normally would have had a poly flywheel. Um, I don't know that we'll try to find one to put on it, but uh, I don't really trust the flight poly flywheels at high RPM, but I see a lot of guys swapping to them on hot saws. So, uh, and if you ain't noticed, that's kind of the route this channel's kind of going. I ain't saying that we ain't going to do just some simple work saw builds like we've been doing, but uh, if you'll notice, I've not really been... I've been showing port work, but ain't really been sharing timing numbers and just exactly what's going into some of these builds. But uh, that's kind of the route I'm leaning to here. It just interests me a little more to see, you know, I'm going to try to get in some bigger logs here, but 
Uh, I think tomorrow I'm gonna go bring in just what's left of that tree. It'll be like probably eight, nine inch stuff. So it'll work good just to do some timed cuts to see if we make improvements on the saw. Um, and on some of this stuff, on some of them, we're getting down like to the tenth of a second. Uh, but to me, it's fine. I know to other people, it's probably like, hey, why, why in the world are you doing that? But uh, it just like drag racing, you know, just see if we can shave a little ET off of the car. But uh, we did get a rim sprocket with this. My dang 440 had a freaking spur sprocket on it. I bought a drum and a rim to go on it. I just never have swapped it. I'll be honest with you, I've ran that saw very little. I cut probably a couple cord of firewood with it after I build it. And it is an awesome saw. It's really light, has a lot of power. Um, but we've just done so many here. I'm um, just finding time to get them all out and run them all. It's just, honestly, it's kind of got out of hand. I should probably just start letting some of them go to build more. Um, but, you know, whatever it is, what it is. Um, another bag of just random parts and stuff. Um, you know, we'll go through and go over a lot of this stuff when I go to do the build. But I don't know when you'll see the build video. Um, as always, you know, you'll probably see a short video on the... Uh, on the channel before you ever see the full build. Um... Okay, it's in there. No. Some of these you'll get the dang outer cover that goes on this, and then sometimes they forget it. Um, it kind of funny. I actually, one of the 660s I done, and it may have been the big bore one, and I don't think I shared it on the video because it was kind of embarrassing. If you guys remember when I done the test cuts, um, that saw was just horrible, just fall on its face. Um, a lot of it was, some of it was the muffler, <laughs> but a lot of it was uh, when I pulled the, uh, it's not in there, um, when I pulled the air filter off, and like I said, some of them have it and not, um, to re-inspect everything, that uh, outer cover was wadded up around the inside of the air filter. Um, I don't know that it was really restricting it much or causing it to slow down any at all but it probably wasn't helping things either but i don't remember if i showed that or not but just something funny you know none of us are perfect um, but that is weird like uh my first 660 it didn't have that outer cover and then the other two that we bought did have it and this one of them weird deals and it's kind of weird that that's just randomly laying out your worm gear for the oil pump um and this is probably what most people are wanting to look at. That's a real good damn sign. Um, <laughs> piece of chipped, broke plastic laying in the bottom of the box. I wonder what that's off of. There it went on the floor, so I hope it wasn't nothing major. Hell, there's pieces of chipped, broke shit laying all in the bottom of that box. That's kind of weird. I wonder what that is, guys. <laughs> That's really odd. There ain't no sign of mice being in here. We have like freaking 20 or 30 cats running around here, so I usually don't have a problem with mice. We'll have one every now and then, and I kind of feel sorry for them because um, <laughs> they just kind of get... Uh, just tore out of hell i guess by the animals um it is kind of funny if every now and then like i'll order something and if you get a box that looks like it's been sitting for a while and chewed up um don't open it in your house i've done this twice once on a clutch for my mustang when i got it i was like man this box just looks like it came over on the mayflower and it was like all chewed up had holes in it but Evidently, there was three baby mice that came with it from wherever I'd ordered it from. And uh, at the time, we only had one house cat and my daughter's Yorkie. And Yorkies are bred. That's what they were bred for in Europe to track down and hunt and kill mice and rats. And 
I'm telling you, I felt sorry for the mice. They, had, uh, they were having a battle over who got to kill those things. It was just kind of crazy, but um, another funny story, but uh, I don't know what the hell that stuff is. Um, it's just kind of weird. Let's dump it out in the trash. Yep, super weird. Here's what most of myself and the rest of us are wanting to see here, the rest of you guys. Um, and I know these unboxings are boring, but maybe not to some people. Um, see what we got. A lot of farmer tech cylinders here lately have been pretty nice. I think uh, I've gotten a couple that are bad, like the one for the 272, but I should have known better. It, it came with like gaskets and seals and everything for the saw and uh it's like 15 bucks for it all but that cylinder was just not even usable it had to just be you know a defect um that's a different colored one than i'm used to seeing um there's an ebay notification Maybe it's a seller that I ordered the 288 gaskets from nine days ago or eight days ago or something. Telling me they finally shipped them. Um, <laughs> it's too bad I done left on negative feedback on it. If I order something and you say I'm going to get it within a week and you don't even ship it out within a neat week, you're probably going to get negative feedback. Yeah, your typical cast strings, nothing special. Um, I don't have a problem with this stuff. I know a lot of people just chunk it, which kind of blows my mind. And those sir clips, um, they're actually like OEM style clips that I just pulled out of that. I should have showed them, I guess. Um, that's pretty cool. I'm starting to see that a lot on the farm. They want our piston on the floor. That was good on it. Um, probably never show up, but they don't have little tangs on them. Um, I said OEM style clips. Oh shit, we got a dome piston, guys. Not a pop up, but a true dome, which in my opinion is always better. Um, is that not cool? Um, that's really nice finish on that piston. Um, I'd even had thoughts of ordering like a meteor piston, but I think we'll be just fine with that. Um, really, really nice piston. Um, fitment in the jug listen at that super nice um, holy crap that cylinder looks nice guys um, I'll probably have to pull you guys off the tripod to give you a look I'm checking it out myself first um, transfers look good um Look really good. I don't remember the last, that one I done for Yankee Nimrod, the 440 with the 460 top end on it. It was an 044. I don't remember the transfers on it being that big. And I'm talking about the uppers. They're as, about as wide as the, the lower transfer pockets. Um, exhaust port's kind of got a rough casting in it there's a lot of room for improvement there even room to open up the mouth of it a little um but the bolt holes look like they're good um the port placement looks good let me just pull you guys off of that tripod and give you a look at it up close hopefully we can get enough light here have enough light let's see um Look at the size of those uppers. I don't, it's been a while since I've done it, but, um, and it was an OEM 460 cylinder. I don't know. I could go back and look, I guess, but I don't remember them being that wide. They look like the casting in them kind of rough too. Um, what's the band look like? Looks like it'd be easy to sand if we have to. I don't even know that there's any plating on the band by looking at it. It's kind of awful dull looking. Um, 
I'd ordered a uh, cylinder on my 038. It was like a third one I've put on it, but I finally got a winner. It came from EPR, which sells Farmer Tech stuff here stateside, but the box had a different brand name on it, and uh, that cylinder looked identical to this, and that thing was awesome. Um, I'd cut the base and band on that. We need to get that saw back out and run it some. That's another one of those freak saws that just flat out rips. Um, yeah, this thing don't look half bad at all, guys. Um, intake port what's the in, the port itself look like it looks pretty good um yeah this thing will be real nice to work with guys um, i'm kind of anxious to build the saw now um, but anyway um i'm gonna try to get this stuff somewhat back in the box the way they had it um i highly doubt i will i'd say there'll be stuff hanging over i'll be putting stuff um somewhere else until we get to the build which uh looking like maybe monday even on my i might start on it and it, you know it'll take a couple of days to do it i guess but uh port work on it probably take longer than anything um but um with that said i'm gonna cut you guys off i don't know when you'll see this maybe sunday today's friday um as always thank you guys for watching um Y'all stay safe. Uh, thank you all for what you do. And everybody have a good day.